Well, hello friends. What I have here is um, the ingredients I'm going to use to make some um, tofu. You can see I've got the tofu press and then I've got this um, nigari or magnesium uh, chloride which is also known as um, actually Epsom salt is the other um, magnesium chloride is also Epsom salt. Um, and then this is just natural uh, sea salt which I'm going to use to salt my um, tofu because I'm going to try and make it seasoned. Um, well, let's just say more seasoned <laughs> because I feel that uh, tofu is too bland uh, for me. I'm going to make some that tastes like egg. I'm going to make some that tastes like, um, uh, what else could we make? Cheese. I'm going to try and make one that's cheesy. And I'm going to make one that um, tastes like beef, okay, or chicken, or both. So I didn't make a whole lot of beans, but I did. Um, so let me show you what you do. You get the soybeans, and they look tiny, like tiny little um, balls, little pebbles about the size of a pearl. Um, and you're going to take these and put about a cup in, in some container or more, however many cups you want to make. But I, I'm just saying one cup for me. Um, and then you put them in. And for example, I put these in overnight. And they're soaked up and they've gotten big. But you just have to soak them from four to eight hours or overnight or whenever. And then this, I've started another batch. So I just put that in right now. So I'm going to take these out of the way. And this nagari, um, this is nagari. This is what is used to activate the curdling of the milk, of, of the soy milk, which you make. Um, and it's called nagari. I hope that's not, okay, it's not backwards, good. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, the other name for that um, is um, Epsom salt. It's the same uh, uh, chemical ingredient. So. I've heard people try to make it with Epsom salt, but I just went ahead and bought the Nagari. Now this is some Rejuvelac, which I made. Um, I'm going to try it on some of it um, to give it the cheesy flavor. All right, and then so this one has been uh, soaking, and, and this is a... Um, a tofu strainer box which I bought on Amazon um, and it has a, a little uh, spring on it and you put the straining box then you put the other box then you're gonna press it into this little locking mechanism and that will hold continuous tension and if you want it to be even more firm you can put something on there that's heavy and press it even further. Like, I don't know, there's several things you would use. But anyway, you would weight it down if you want it to be even firmer or leave it longer. Okay, so this is gonna be what we're gonna do with that. And then also you have uh, some cheesecloth. And then I have some different size um, bags to strain the, um, the tofu milk and cheese. So uh, you can use um, potato sack cloth, cheese cloth, these training bags, which um, I like better because it feels like I, I'm less risk for spilling. All right, so I'm taking these things out of here. And next I'm going to pour the um, I'm going to pour these beans into this water. And I am going to try and get the leaf of the, um, what do you call them, the little skins to come off. And so you just kind of squeeze it between your fingers to loosen up the skins. And I, I've heard say on some of their um, YouTube videos that that 
takes away the beanie flavor if you take away the skins. So that's what I would like to do. I would like to have no beanie flavor. <laughs> and so, see then the um, beans, that the skin will float on the top and you just get rid of it. And there's some more of those. So I'm just going to squeeze them a little bit. Get those out. Uh, another thing you could do is just rinse it. Uh, but I wanted to do it over here and not on the sink so I wouldn't have to move the camera. This makes it easier. So I can feel the skins coming loose. And so the, the skins kind of float on top while the beans go to the bottom. And then you, I guess I could use like a skimmer. Let me see if I have one here. We'll skim it with this. See if it helps. <laughs> no, that's too hard. Okay, let's see. I guess I could do it this way. That doesn't seem like it's helping. <laughs> but the but you can see the the beams are right there. Let's see, I'm gonna take this beam out. Okay. Pour that one back. Throw these out. So I'm just going to take out the beans. Goodness, it's not an easy job, that's for sure. So, so this is the hardest part, is getting the skins off. Some people don't even bother with that. but. I would like it not to be so beany, so I'm going to do it this way. Wow, there's a lot in there. So let's, that, that didn't seem to help very much. Let me squish it some more. I'm trying to see if there's a better way to do it, but it looks like it's just going to be a matter of um, getting these to um, come off. So the rejuvenac that I made, I made from, um, I thought it was quinoa or um, something like that. One, um, It doesn't really matter, I guess, which seeds you choose, but you just got to sprout some seeds um, in a, over a few days. I think it took me like a week to um, sprout them. 
and um, and then those um, then I, I, I refrigerated it there's still a lot of um, skins here That doesn't seem like it did anything. <laughs> okay. So here you can see I've removed the holes, or I've hulled the beans. And um, I got as much as I could out, shook it around. I didn't see any more, but there could be a few in there, no big deal. And so this is the part, um, the skin, which... Um, I will be discarding into compost or something like that. And now this is going to be uh, the beans. Um, the rehydrated beans um, are going to you're going to be using uh, one part beans to uh, six to eight parts water to make your milk. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to. First, let's measure how much beans that is. Okay, I'm going to use this measuring cup. And I'm going to strain first. So now I'm going to pour the beans in there. So while these are soaked, uh, while these soaked, I'm soaking some more beans so I can make some different types of tofu. All right, so let's see. So it looks like it's two cups, two cups of beans. And this was after I hold it. And this was originally one cup of uh, soybeans that looked like this little round ones and then they hydrate they look like that okay so now i'm going to pour these into here and i'm going to fill um, with eight cups of water because it's so um i'm sorry no. For, it could be anywhere from four to eight times the water i'm going to go ahead and go let's see six to eight parts of water, right? So I could uh, fill this up four times because this each one of these is four cups. And I have some um, water that's been, um, what do you call it, um, filtered. So here's one. Well, I'm only going to be able to put two in there. Two, huh? So that's two. Well, that's not a very much. <laughs> um. But 
that's all that will fit in there. Unless I do half of them, which would be one cup at a time, I could do that. Let's do that. Let's see. your mess. Okay, so this looks to be about one cup. So, well, what I could do is a one to three ratio per container. So that's one cup. So I would fill it up twice with these. I'm trying to get the filtered water. That also can be So this, let's see how much fits in there. <laughs> okay, so I think that's more than enough. And that's going to be the milk. So we are going to blend this. Let me dry all this mess here. Do it a little bit more.
right now. Hmm. So you just squeeze out the water. And I'm going to uh, ladle a little bit into the blender to rinse it out. Because there's more in there, and that seems kind of runny to me. I probably should just pour the um, other beans in there. I had surgery, so I'm having a real time of lifting my arm. Okay. I think I'm just gonna make it twice as big. Um, thinking I'm going to pour this back in there. And, um, and I'm going to put the other beans in there as well. make it thicker. Mm. And actually, I want to pour this milk back in there and run it one more time.
that looks better. Looks more milky. So maybe it's supposed to be one dry cup to eight parts because when I did it with um, uh, the wet part, it didn't seem like it was going to be enough. This is the oil. Oh. Hey, boy. All right. So this three and one. Oh, I want to pour the rest. Here. Are you? I bet you're hoping I'm going to give you some of my fries, aren't you? Aren't you? That's what you're trying to do. Here you go. There you go. Now get out. Take them outside. And then it's alone. Why did I say I'm trying to do a video here? Okay. So I'm going to. Uh, um, heat up this um, oil, this um, milk. Okay, it's going to go into this pot. And what you want to do is you want to bring it to a boil, but um, right away after you, you bring it to a boil, you want to reduce it. So I'm going to take this apart. I'm gonna use. Well, I could use a whisk. Okay, let's use a whisk.
when you say from scratch, does that mean? From the bean. Wow. That's pretty scratchy, all right. So while this is um, warming up, we are going to take the nagari. And we're going to put um, three teaspoons of nagari, or one tablespoon. <laughs> Same thing, right? Uh, one tablespoon nagari, which is this stuff right here. You're going to put that into about one cup of warm water. Put it right there. Well, you know what? I'm going to put a little bit more because it's very flaky. It feels like it like spread out a lot. Okay. And I'm going to add warm water. stir. I don't know what I did with it. The red one is what I'm looking for. Oh, here it is. All right. So I'm going to use this stir to dissolve the nagari in there. So 
first you have to bring it to a boil and let it sit. supposed to be 80 to 90 um, degrees Fahrenheit, I'm sorry, Celsius. right away because it will stick. Okay, so I didn't feel like it congealed enough with the Nagari method. So I am going to use the um, uh, Nigerian style now, which is to add lemon when it's boiling. So that's what I'm doing now. So I'm waiting for it to get hot enough to boil. And what is that? So I'm waiting for this to get hot enough to boil. And I put a little bit of oil in there to prevent the excessive foaming. Like a teaspoon of oil. So when it starts to look like it's boiling or frothing, I'm going to start adding the lemon and it looks like it's starting so I'm going to lower the heat a little bit <coughs> looks like it's starting to congeal <laughs> now maybe I didn't cook it long enough before it looks like it's congealing now. I'm not sure it's high enough. I'm going to raise the heat. There we go. Okay. That's what it should look like. I lowered a little bit and now I'm going to add some of the lemon water in there. So it's 50 50. 50% 50 lemon uh, to 50% water, half and half. congealed a lot better. I'm going to put a little more.
you can see. It's curdled and separated. I'm going to put just a little more lemon. And mix it. Now this I'm going to pour in here. I'm going to strain the tofu into there. This is my mold. This is a um, round mold. So I'm just going to put this on top of there. Let's see, I was going to set it in here, I believe. Okay, and then I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this on there with a weight. Let's see what weight. Okay, I have some more beans soaking with water. I'm going to use that as my weight. And that is going to be the, uh, what's going to cause pressure on there. And this, some people drink it, but... <laughs> I'm not sure what I will do. Let me taste it. Mm, seems okay. But I'm not going to say it. Alright. So, I guess I can leave it on there for like 10 minutes. Or 20 give or take. So you let this simmer for about seven minutes at low heat. So this has been sitting here for a while and I squeezed out this uh, water or this, um, I don't know what you call it, the, the fluid. So this is the, the cheese, um, oh, there had more in there. So anyway, this one is a round one that I got. I also got a square one, so you can do either one. This one's kind of nice for, uh, I like it to look like a, a real Mexican cheese. <laughs> and this one is to make the square tofu. What's nice about it is you put the tofu in there, you know, in the cheesecloth, then you put this on top and you weight it. This um, gives it a little um, pressure, continuous pressure. 
and then you press this down and stand oops press it down and click it once you have the the tofu in there and it'll just continuously press it down plus you can put a weight in it like this and that will um, continue to pull out the fluid this is the fluid i got out of this in here and i poured it in here and um you can press it so the longer it stays it's been in there quite a while like maybe an hour i wanted it to be kind of dry and hard and that's about all i'm going to get i think from it so i'm going to open this up oh and then after you open it up you want to put it in water so let me rinse the container i'm going to put it in and they say putting it in the water I'm using filtered water to um, put it in. Okay, so I'm gonna exchange these. And I've got my next batch already um, went down to do the next batch. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And it's still warm. I'm going to turn this upside down so I could show it. There it is. So let me taste it. Let's see what it tastes like. I added extra salt and it tastes to me like Mexican cheese, like queso ranchero. And that's the effect I was going for because for me, the, um, um, the regular tofu is too bland. Mexicans, we like a lot of flavor. <laughs> wow, this is good. I like it. Now, I made another batch and it just was too runny, but I added some of the um, uh, uh, glutamate stuff in it and that stuff, um, or alginate, I'm sorry, the calcium alginate will um, make it not congeal, but um, just be a, kind of runny. So that other one didn't work out. And the, the one that I flavored like chicken, I went ahead and made it into a broth because it did not congeal. Now I want to show you this other one. This is the other one that I made to taste like egg. Let me open it. It's hard to open. And it has a very interesting texture. And I thought it looks kind of like the cheese you would put on nachos. So, and it tastes like it too. So what I'm probably going to do is add jalapeno juice to this. Let's go ahead and do that. I have some jalapenos here that I opened a can up and I'm going to put it in here and that will give it a authentic uh, nacho cheese. So this is what happened when I, when I added the um, uh, alginate instead of gelling i mean instead of congealing it became like a jelly and i thought wow pretty cool now i figured out a way to make this nacho cheese so i just added some of that yellow food coloring uh, if you'll recall and um 
and the one that did not work was the one that was um this was the one that i was going to make into egg and this one i made out of the moon flower afterwards and i added the the alternate and it did this so let's taste it now oh my god it's perfect perfect for um um It tastes just like nacho cheese with jalapeno flavor. So it will be perfect for making nachos. Nachos and so that's what happened. And when I say alternate, let me show you. No, not alternate. Uh-uh. So, let me show you these again. I was confusing these two. The methyl cellulose HC HB versus the sodium alginate. This is what I put in, uh, which is what you put in to make the uh, meat substitute. And this is the one you use for spirification for making uh, the eggs, which I will be showing a video for. All right. Well, so there you have it. Um, we have our tofu. And it. Um, if I leave it in there longer, it will firm up further. But I think it's perfect. And I really like the flavor. So I'm going to put it in the cool water because they say that'll harden it a little more and take away the little lemony flavor it has. And then you store it in water. We're done.